Hi everyone and welcome to today's latest mix set build videos for Monster Hunter World. Today's set focuses on something a tad different than what we usually do and not something to take too serious with or use a lot for because of how gimmicky this set is in different situations. Today I present you my big game hunter build that maximizes the heavy burden with the snipe against large body monsters to pull off a destructive amount of damage in one hit. So this build came to mind when I was playing around with the heavy burger one day and I thought to myself why does such a powerful attack feel lacking and useless against certain monsters? Which gave me the crazy idea to build around this weakness of being useless against smaller monsters and making it useful against taking down larger than life monsters like Xeno and Colby but also stacking up a ton of damage in one or a few hits. Now the weapon being used is the Griffin Blazooka which comes in with an attack value of 330 Minus 20 affinity, 1 level 1 dual slot, plus 15 defense, and 1 augmentation slot. Straight away, you can tell this weapon is going to be a powerful heavy gun simply because of being a Diablos weapon, which always have a high roar but minus affinity attached. And secondly, being one of the highest attack values in game for all heavy bow guns. I believe this is the only one, well, if you were to prepare to the Angedath heavy bow gun, it's probably the only one that's probably the most highest damaging heavy bow gun in game currently. If you were to compare this weapon to the Magda Jimitas 2 Heavy Bow Gun, I hope I said that right, which has a tad smaller attack value of 315, but a level 2 dual slot and 2 augmentation slots, you can see that both weapons are a tad similar in stats, or better off give you something else to work towards, if you don't have the Griffin Blazooka instead. And the Anginanth Heavy Bow Gun as well is also similar in terms of stats, but is, I say, a bit more recoil or heavy. They also both have similar ammo types of when you run out of using Wither Snipe, so you can go ahead and use the normal spread or pierce rounds until your Wither Snipe recharges again. Now the build. The build will make full use of the Wither Snipe mode and will be our main point of DPS. At the same time, when the Wither Snipe needs to recharge, we can then go ahead and use the other ammo types available, but specifically our pierce, sticky and Wither ammo will be our secondary choice of DPS. But this may vary for you, as you may go with something else that might be better suited for you. It's up to you. So here are the stats for the set. Firstly, I have attack boost 5 to receive a large boost to my damage and also receive 5% affinity to my weapon, which can help with negating the minus affinity the weapon currently has. Then I have weakness exploit 3 for the 50% affinity upon weak points. This skill I've noticed is useful if you were to use it with the spread or normal rounds, as it will enhance the amount of damage you do, but for the sake of pierce ammo, it's 50 50 as the first hit from the pierce activates the weakness exploit skill, but after the following shots, it doesn't carry through. So it's more of the moment you hit your first shot, that's when it activates and then afterwards when it pierces the next part of the body, it doesn't. Useful if you just want to negate the minus affinity of the weapon, not so useful if you want to make full use of it. So it's, it's entirely up to you, you don't have to have this skill onto it. But depending on what ammo type you're using, it's better if you play around first and see which one gives you more mileage. Next I have Sting and Capacity 3, which sounds really odd to have on the Bogon set. But consider this, it will increase the amount of slinger ammo you have, which if you're using the bomb pods or dragon pods, can stun the monster repeatedly and allow you and your teammates to attack more freely. Plus, it's a skill that I thought would be great to show off for users that want to know whether this skill is useful or not, as the set in mind is a gimmick set, so you don't have to take this set completely serious, but when you're taking on big game, monsters in the game, then you might as well just try anything out while you're there. Next we have two specialists free, which can aid us in reducing the charge time for mantles or boosters, but was mainly used for the dual slots available, so I can add in a tenderizer and elementalist jewel. Then we have focus 2, which aids us in speeding up the charge time for with the snipe shot, and is a must have for the set. Now since we are using this skill all the time, you can speed up the charge time by either getting rid of the piercing shot jewel, if you have it, or take a tenderizer jewel out, and work from there. As at max, you can fire your weapon shots more often within around 45 seconds to 50 seconds. But don't quote me on the timing, because it's, it's iffy at best. It recharges very fast, but it's kind of up to you whether you want to recharge it even faster, or you're happy with just having focus 2 at where it currently is. So next we have special ammo boost 2, which increases the amount of damage your weapon like does, and is also a must have. Then we have maximum might 2 to help negate the minus affinity the heavy bowgun has. Then we have piercing shots level 1, that will increase the damage piercing shots do, but this can be switched out for normal or spread instead, as it depends on what secondary ammo you want to use when your weapon snipe is down, and it also depends if you have the jewel available. I choose this skill as it helps with taking on bigger body monsters like Colby much more easier, as they have long bodies, so using pierce is basically a no brainer. 
Then we have non-enemy to boost one, which is also a must-have, as it increases your damage by a very large amount, and is not something you want to skip out at all. Lastly, we have health boost one, which was added to fill out the spare level one jewel slot and evade window one, which are from the Dante's glove and not really that needed. Overall, the attack value will be 408, affinity being 15%, defense being 418, and honestly quite a ugly looking set that you need to have layered armor on for, because to be honest, it is just horrendous. It's it's zero out of ten for fashion, basically. Anyways, my weapon has also been augmented to have an affinity org to help with adding on extra affinity and basically a boost in damage to our weapon. But you can swap it out for an attack org instead for a bigger damage boost, since that will affect your overall weapon side damage as well. But extra affinity won't hurt you as well. This heavy bowgun alone can pull off some nifty damage either through its varied ammo or with a snipe, with the with snipe netting you around, depending on if your shot actually pierces the monster, 100 plus to 200 plus, if you land all your shots and let it pierce the monster as far as it can go. And the great thing about using with snipe is that if you perfect it perfectly, it is capable of stunning monsters if a perfect lineup is made. So if you can line up a shot perfectly, not only will you stun the monster for a brief few seconds, it also gives your teammates a bit of breathing room, so they can go in and wail on the monster and probably do a secondary stun on them as well. The effect they can pull off if a perfect or near perfect line of connect can allow plenty of opportunity for your teammates. And extra damage, just like I said. Now I recommend you do this with a teammate as they can come in and distract the monster long enough for you to go into your sniping mode. However, this can only be pulled off if you manage to get a nice line of sight with the monster in play. As against Xeno or Coffee Phase 2, or Jenny even Basil, this can prove difficult to land a shot and hope it pierces through them. Plus, you have to also remember that you have to position yourself every time when you're using them with a snipe, which can be a pain if the monster keeps moving around so much, but that's why we have alternatives, just in case things don't go as planned. Now, I recommend that you don't do this solo, do this in group, and specifically against the more large body monsters, because it works much more better. You don't want to go ahead and use this build against someone like Oda Gowan, for example, or even Kieran, because they're too mobile and it's practically impossible. Well, not impossible, but incredibly difficult to land a perfect with a snipe onto the monster. But if you go into group play and use this, you have a much higher chance at landing a perfect shot. Ish. At the same time, you'll also be making full use of the with an ammo, which is very powerful ammo type that should only be used when none of your teammates are nearby, as you can blow them away, and only when the monster is immobilized, as you need to be up close for damage to affect the monster, but when done successfully, it can net you over 100 plus damage with ease, and can be reloaded really quickly to be fired again if you mod it correctly. I find that using this against Colby nets you a ton of damage against the horns in the final phase, or even in the third phase, or even fourth phase, it can net you a lot of damage and potentially knock Colby over for a few seconds or a few durations. But there you have it, a simple gimmicky set designed around taking on large and long body monsters with ease, with this genuinely foolproof weapon, skills and very lacklustre looking armor set. But that shouldn't be a problem when you're hitting over 100 plus per shot on monsters such as Xeno or Colby, and also flinch them quite a ridiculous amount. Just don't use this against small body monsters like I mentioned before because it will probably not work. And also do make sure that you do this in group play, so they can distract the monster long enough for you to recharge your shot and line up a perfect shot. So if you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I would appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.